You know it's been almost two years since I talked about Greek mythology. I spent so much time talking about the other less popular mythologies that I kind of neglected the Greeks, and I feel bad for that. But I'm going to make up for it with today's video about Dionysus. Dionysus has a few stories, but this one might be my most favorite because it incorporates an element of his that is not seen in many other myths. Madness. That's right. On top of being the god of wine and parties, Dionysus is also a god of madness. The Bacchae is also kind of different from what our usual stuff is. The Bacchae was a play written by Euripides in the late 390s and early 400s BC. It's not an actual myth. I'm going to treat it like a myth though because it's a fun story, and you know I loved sharing fun stories. Now, without further ado, let's begin. The play starts off with Dionysus addressing the audience to introduce himself, and he gives the whole story surrounding his birth. There's a lot to his origin that I'm going to skip over because I want to save that for another Dionysus video. For this though, all you need to know is that he is the son of Zeus and the mortal woman Semele. Dionysus also informs the audience he's recently just gotten back from a trip in Asia. This isn't all of Asia though. To the ancient Greeks, Asia would have been the Middle East and India. Dionysus has returned to Greece because one of the city-states, Thebes, has outlawed his worship. And understandably, Dionysus is really pissed off about that. To make things worse, the guy who is in charge of Thebes is actually related to Dionysus. Pentheus, the king of Thebes, had a mother who was a sister of Dionysus' mother Semele. King Pentheus and his family outlawed worship of Dionysus, claiming that Semele lied about sleeping with Zeus, and instead her child was just a mortal who died long ago. Dionysus is reasonably upset about his family denying his divinity, so he's decided to pay them a visit. On his way to Thebes, Dionysus came across a group of women in the woods. These women, as it turned out, were actually Dionysus' aunts. To celebrate this family reunion, he uses his powers of insanity to turn the women mad. He creates a group of loyal followers called the Maenads. The Maenads are basically Dionysus' fangirls, and they do whatever he says without question or hesitation. Their job description includes worship of Dionysus, seems normal for fangirls, dancing in the woods, gotta practice that worship somehow, it's all good, breastfeeding animals, okay, that's a little weird, and ripping apart anyone and everyone upon Dionysus' command. These guys are basically ancient Greece's believers. The Maenads and Dionysus eventually arrive at the outskirts of Thebes. And what do they do when a bunch of fangirls show up somewhere? They trash the place. And obviously they start worshipping him there too. King Pentheus is furious at the people worshipping Dionysus and goes to his grandfather and the religious leader Tiresias for advice. Pentheus' grandfather is Cadmus and he is the founder of Thebes. And he's the only one in the royal family who is okay with worshipping Dionysus. Pentheus asks the two men how he should handle this Dionysus situation. And they both say, You cannot beat Dionysus. He is a god. This will not end well for you. His grandfather Cadmus even tells him that having a god in the family could prove to be useful. Remember, Pentheus is Dionysus' cousin, so Cadmus is also Dionysus' grandfather too. Pentheus decides to ignore his grandfather and the religious leader's advice, and then he orders some soldiers to go arrest the Maenads and their leader. The soldiers go out, and eventually they return with Dionysus. But Dionysus let himself get captured because he wanted to see King Pentheus in person. Also, Dionysus disguised himself, so they don't realize that they have captured the god himself. Pentheus starts off the meeting with a typical icebreaker. He asks Dionysus, where are you from? Dionysus tells him that he's from Lydia, modern day Turkey, and that he's been traveling all over Asia spreading Dionysian worship. King Pentheus then says all Asians are stupid for worshiping Dionysus. Whoa, dude, jeez him racist. He then says Dionysus looks like a girl and orders the guards to take Dionysus to the prison. As Dionysus is carried away, he shouts back, you're gonna regret this, but Pentheus was unfazed by the comment. Spoiler alert, he will regret it. While he's in prison, Dionysus uses his insanity powers to influence Pentheus' mind. He makes Pentheus think that Dionysus escaped and Pentheus tries to capture the escaped prisoner. In reality though, Pentheus was trying to tie up a bull, which you can imagine does not end well for him. Dionysus also made Pentheus commit a little arson before releasing him from his control. After releasing Pentheus from his control, Dionysus says, hmm, let's shake things up around here. He summons a massive earthquake to hit the city of Thebes, making the prison completely collapse, allowing him to escape. 
He then summons a flurry of lightning bolts to terrify Pentheus. I don't really know how he did this, I guess he called in a favor from his dad and uncle. The play didn't say, he just did it. Anyway, Dionysus is out of jail now, and he's still disguised, mind you. He walks over to Pentheus and says, I told you you'd regret doing that. Pentheus then orders Dionysus recaptured, but Dionysus says, You should probably tend to your own town before me. Just then, some herdsmen come into the palace and tell King Pentheus that the main ads have gotten even crazier. They've started ripping cows apart with their bare hands, they're stealing babies, and they're just completely destroying the Theban countryside. Also, Pentheus' mother has joined the main ads. This is especially troubling to Pentheus because she was just as much against Dionysian worship as he was. The herdsmen reasonably come to the conclusion that Dionysus must be a god, and that to stop this suffering, the king should allow Dionysian worship. King Pentheus doubles down though, and he refuses to acknowledge that Dionysus is a god. King Pentheus says he's going to stop the Maenads himself, and it's here where Dionysus gets an idea. I imagine it's one of those ideas that just gives you a devilish grin, because you just know how great of an idea it is. Dionysus uses his powers to start influencing Pentheus' mind once again, and he tells him that before he can attack the Maenads, he needs to spy on them. Pentheus thinks this is a great idea, but he knows that the Maenads will shred any man that goes near them apart. So what does he do? Well Dionysus tells him he should dress up as a woman and go spy on them like that, and Pentheus is fully on board, 100%. Like, he goes full RuPaul drag race mode. Wig, dress, makeup. Wait, did the ancient Greeks have makeup? Huh, learn something new every day. Man, I can only imagine what Dionysus was thinking when he gave Pentheus this idea. Probably something like, you call me a girl, huh? We'll see who's girly when I'm through with you. <laughs> Moving on. Pentheus went into the palace, and he came out afterwards decked to the nines. He was a little unsure of how he looked, but Dionysus reassured him that he was beautiful. He even said, you look just like your mother. Dionysus led Pentheus up the mountain, where the Maenads were, but he wouldn't go the whole way because he didn't want the Maenads to rip him apart. Pentheus asked if his mother would bring him back down the mountain, and Dionysus smirked, responding, Oh, she'll carry you back down the mountain. Don't worry. The play literally says here, ominous music plays. You can imagine what kind of foreshadowing this is. Pentheus goes up the mountain and tries to blend in with the main heads, but they see through his disguise very quickly and... Well... You remember how earlier I said the Maenads rip apart whoever Dionysus tells them to? Yeah, you can probably see where this is going. All the Maenads descend upon Pentheus and they start chucking rocks at him. Dionysus released Pentheus from his mind control so that he could comprehend what's going on and he was horrified. The first one to attack Pentheus was actually his mother, Agave. Pentheus' mother ripped his son's wig off and as Pentheus begged for mercy, she ripped his arm off. The other main ass descended upon Pentheus, and in a crazed frenzy, they ripped the skin from his bones until he was unrecognizable. Agave was in such a bloodlust that she carried her own son's severed head back into Thebes, thinking it was a lion's head. You see what Dionysus did there? She carried him back. That's some good foreshadowing. She's so gone that she says she's going to eat the lion's head, and then orders her son to nail the lion's head to the wall. Agave's father, Cadmus, is horrified to see what his daughter's done. He weeps and begs for her to break out of the psychosis, but she brags about her kill to her father. Cadmus weeps over the fact that his line has ended, and he curses Dionysus for allowing this to happen. I guess he forgot that Dionysus was still in the area when he did that, because that is not the smartest idea to curse someone who's right behind you. Eventually, Agave does break out of the trance, and once she realizes that she killed her own son, she breaks down crying. Dionysus then appeared before both of them, now in his true divine form. And now it's time to dish out some punishment. For cursing Dionysus, Cadmus and his wife must be turned into snakes, and they will have to lead barbarian hordes in attacks against Greek city-states. I think the irony here is that Cadmus founded a Greek city-state, and now he has to spend the rest of his life attacking them. Agave gets a much lighter punishment. After begging Dionysus for mercy, he simply banishes her from Thebes. A new ruling family is put in charge of Thebes, and they know not to outlaw Dionysus' worship. Well, that's the bake for you. Now remember how I said this was a Greek play? 
quick history lesson for you. There are two kinds of Greek plays, according to Aristotle. Comedies, which have happy endings, and tragedies, which have sad endings. Now knowing this, where would you place the bake? The answer that most historians give is it's a tragedy, and there's plenty of evidence to support that. A family is falling apart, and people getting ripped apart isn't exactly a happy ending. There is an argument though that this is a comedic play, and that argument is that Dionysus is the main character, and he gets his happy ending. The people who outlawed his worship are gone, and no one's denying his divinity anymore. The play also doesn't have an anagnorisis scene, which most tragedies have. This is a scene where the main hero realizes their mistakes, but it usually happens when it's too late. This play doesn't have a moment like that though, since Dionysus is the main character and he gets what he wants. Pentheus was ripped to shreds before he could have any realization of his wrongdoing, and Agave was under mind control for most of the play, so she didn't have a mistake to make of her own free will. Most historians label the Bacchae as a tragedy, but it's important to bring up that this play doesn't follow the traditional rules of Greek theater. And that's part of the reason why I like it so much. It's just a fun story to watch Dionysus kick butt, and it's also kind of unique. Thank you for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want to see more, and have a good one.